Today in Clown World, we are going to talk about the next brilliant step towards our eagerly awaited dystopian future. The past two years has been an amazing journey because our overlords have told us we are all in this together. In fact, the isolation has nurtured closer bonds between people as we stayed prisoners in our home. They failed to tell us that we includes you and me, but not them. The two weeks to flatten a curve has blossomed into two years of government overreach, including the loss of bodily autonomy, privacy, financial security, employment, and any semblance of freedom that we once had. While big pharma, large corporations, and billionaire psychopaths, oops, hee <laughs> hee, I meant philanthropists, made record profits. Meanwhile, the population finally came to terms that they are a virus, or dare I say, cancer, to poor Mammy Earth. In my opinion, it was well worth it, because that's what Lord Fauci said to me on CNN. As Fauci correctly said, if you're against me, then you're against science, because I am science. Well said, Satan. Oops, Fauci. For one, I completely agree. The science-based mask mandates have lowered the destructive effects of halitosis on our sense of smell. In addition, recent peer-reviewed studies indicate that it will likely lower CO2 emissions. It's my hope that these two past years were merely an opening act. My hope is that the tracing and breaches of our privacy will help us all progressively move to the long-anticipated dystopian future. So, what could possibly be the next surprise from our good grown-ups at the non-elected WHO and CDC? Well, it's whatever Klaus Schwabadaba Ding Dong decides over at the World Economic Forum. Presidents and national leaders await like drooling dogs for the next stage of the non-authoritarian Great Reset. Sure, they'll have to destroy every aspect of our life that we once knew, but the World Economic Forum assures us that by the time they are done, with us, we will have no privacy and own nothing. And get this, lucky us, we will finally be happy. I, for one, look forward to it. How about you? So, I can sense your eager anticipation to find out what is the next exciting step in our march towards losing everything we value and hold dear. Well, wait no more. I'm talking about climate lockdown, of course. What's climate lockdown, you ask? Glad you asked. Let me explain. Climate lockdown is all about Mammy Earth and how to deal with with us useless breathers destroying the planet with our toxic exhalations. This all starts with sounding the doomsday climate emergency bell on every fake news network, which is all of them. The sharing of biased and false, false news has, has become, become all too common on, on social, social media. media. More alarming, some media outlets publish and publish the same thing simply aren't true without checking facts first. first. Unfortunately, some members of the media use their platforms, platforms to push, push their, their own personal, personal bias and agenda, agenda to control exactly what people think. think. And this, this is, is extremely, extremely dangerous to our democracy. The importance is for the media to constantly spawn fear and dread in the useful idiots. If you don't like my sarcasm, then chances are you are one of those useless idiots. These good global citizens, blinded by their own cognitive dissidence, are doing their part by policing family, friends, and neighbors. So we all must ask ourselves one question. Can I do more to help the purposeful collapse of life as we know it? Or should I say life as we knew it? The media propaganda, which states that media propaganda is a conspiracy theory, will facilitate the immense growth of government power. Hopefully, we'll see more and more those unable to think for themselves 
sputter moronic catchphrases such as, it's not about you, it's about others. The noble elite that want to depopulate the world and hate you are already in discussion with other evil organizations to spin out climate lockdowns. Now, for many years now, uh, Democrats have realized that the only way to turn their radical plans into a reality is to take more power and money from the American people and give it to Washington. They want control over almost every aspect of your life. We can't uh, drive our SUVs and, you know, eat as much as we want and keep our homes on, you know, 70... Later, we see Obama's heirs carrying on his mission control. In the same way that we have taxed cigarettes, we're going to have to tax carbon. We have to take the take combustion engine vehicles off the road as rapidly as we can. Would you support changing the dietary guidelines? The, the, yes. The, the reduce red meat specifically. Yes, I would. Now, remember, the left believes that America isn't exceptional. It's systemically racist. And that means we shouldn't be any better off than the rest of the world. So the Greeniac saw an opening when the global economy due to COVID cratered last year. Because of the lockdowns, closures, and reduced demand, carbon emissions fell by about 2.6 billion metric tons, which was a 7% drop from the year prior. Climate change activists who ignored or dismissed the human suffering caused by these draconian COVID rules were positively giddy. That kids were harmed from the cancellation of in-person learning and athletics was simply not relevant given the left's larger long-term goal of reducing America's carbon footprint. So they saw COVID as an opportunity to advance the interests of a global climate bureaucracy. Their pet media marveled about the environmental benefits of lockdowns, again, ignoring human suffering. If there is a silver lining to this crisis, it's visible in the skies above China. All of this inaction while causing so many humans problems has actually proven to be quite good for Mother Earth. If falling pollution levels brought about by lockdowns may have uh, been shining an impact on sunshine. Wild animals are now roaming city streets. How do we make sure these pollution levels don't rebound? So the longer you were behind closed doors, not commuting to work, not going to church, not traveling to see family, the happier those people were. But having a free country means that individuals are making their own risk assessments according to their own risk profiles. The Greeniacs hate that. They much prefer to order you around, or if that's not possible, to frighten you into abandoning your own common sense. So mindless COVID fear-mongering kept suburban women double-masked on running trails and sent urbanites to Amazon Prime for all their grocery orders. My favorite is when they were frantically wiping down their bananas and their egg cartons worried about COVID. You know the virus can live on surfaces, for example, stealing plastic for up to three days. I'm just gonna clean all the virus off here. I don't need to do too much. It's a pretty sensitive virus. For cardboard, it's typically gonna be closer to 24 hours. Of course, none of that was true, right? But he did do a good job of cleaning. But after some fits and starts, we won the COVID debate. Their so-called public health experts were wrong on everything from lockdowns to masks to social distancing. Those measures inflicted enormous economic, educational, and psychological harm to adults and children alike. And Biden's attempt to take credit for this notwithstanding, it was Trump who greenlit Operation Warp Speed. The Red Cross who are now jumping on the climate activist bandwagon, state that the climate change is a bigger threat than the COOF, meaning 99% of the population will prematurely die before the age of 95. Meanwhile, Kill Gates, the non-elected college dropout and self-appointed expert virologist, flies around with his jumble jet to speak to hordes of demonic minions at the World Economic Forum. Kill Gates stated, lockdowns significantly reduced carbon emissions during 2020 
and could be the solution to climate change. So we're learning more now about the sad toll of the corona lockdowns in this country. According to Joe Biden, though, we could get another round of lockdowns, these for a crisis that's every bit as bad as the coronavirus, maybe worse. That crisis, of course, says Joe Biden, is climate change. So what exactly would climate lockdowns look like? Well, most likely cities, states would begin to gradually and very discreetly ramp up restrictions. During the early days of the <clears throat> millions of Americans worked from home. This could be the permanent norm if special carbon taxes are put in place. Such taxes could be imposed on companies limiting driving or air miles and extend to individual employees. Drive to work in a car, you get hit with a tax. Children could be impacted by climate lockdown too. Schools, especially those heavily influenced by teacher unions, could impose permanent online days. You don't think that that's possible? In India, it's already using a version to crack down on their smog pollution. I'm sure your boss would be fine with you taking off every Wednesday for homeschool day. At the same time, either through direct government fiat or due to these ineffective green energy policies, some areas of the country will probably experience California style rolling blackouts. And as they try and phase out fuel and nuclear power, consumers may be even prevented from buying new gasoline cars, lawnmowers, chainsaws, or anything else run by gasoline. Significant measures are already being planned to combat climate change. California will ban the sale of gasoline cars in 13 years, as will Germany. Britain plans to do the same in just eight years. Prohibiting internal combustion engines could save the planet, the argument goes. As each negative weather event is blamed on climate change, governments will increasingly use its restrictive tools of tyranny. A very inconvenient truth is actually that deaths from natural disasters have fallen by two-thirds over the past five decades. Mostly thanks to technological innovations, elites insist that climate change is the biggest modern threat humans have ever faced. Climate lockdowns and other restrictions will be framed as saving the people of the world from themselves. And what goal could be more nobler? I can just see it now. Anyone against such measures will be labeled climate deniers who stand against progress. Or why don't we just jump to being called domestic terrorists? My fear is that those who are not willing to comply, aka Republican conservatives and Christians, will have a very hard time because of facial recognition, plate reading software, coupled with an impressive scope of drones, this could lead to severe enforcement. Now don't expect the new rules to apply to everyone equally. We saw from the last two years that elites really don't wear masks when the cameras are off, but their servers, drivers, and cleaners do. My prediction? is that you will be held responsible for your personal carbon footprint. This is done through the carbon taxes. And this, I guarantee, will be enforced by law. Perhaps maybe an app will be put in place on our phones. Very simple app. Red means you can't go out that day. Green means you can. Perhaps your employment may affect the frequency of which color you're going to see most. Have you ever heard of essential and non-essential workers? Hmm, interesting. Hey guys, thanks for watching my video. Please do the thumbs up thing. Share, like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys at the next live stream.